director actually letting me do this without a guy standing next to me. <laughs> the Gemini voting procedure is everybody's favorite um, woods person, Red Green. Thank you. Great to be here in front of this crowd, what we call the flannel deprived. Now this is a whole new experience for me. Rule. In fact, the, the thing that the idea they even asked me to do this was a real surprise, and not necessarily in a good way. But I guess every once in a while, Billy Van just says, hey, no means no. <laughs> now, I hear that last year they had Jag Baduria do this. At least that's what it, that's what it said on his resume. <laughs> I figure me being here is a better career move than what Sinatra did at the Grammys. You know, so it's gonna work out. Okay, here's how the deal goes. The Academy, uh, well, you know, the, the TV type, they uh, gather injuries. Yeah, wait a minute. Okay, no, that's gather in jury. Okay, that to come to what, what's called a unanimous consensus, which is not all that easy to do in this country. And then once they choose who the nominees are, they're all uh, put over to uh, be voted by the full membership uh, of the Academy. Now, Academy is kind of a, a big fancy word for people who can't spell lodge. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, apparently, I understand, uh, all the ballots uh, come in to the accounting firm of Sharon Lewis and Bram. <laughs> and they count them all up, kind of a rink a doo ka dink a -dur -ka -dink. <laughs> They're just such happy people, you know? And, and once the votes are all together, they take them over to somebody important, and I figure he probably throws them in the garbage. And then he just picks whoever he wants to win, because that's pretty well how I'd do it if I was in charge. <laughs> so that's your rules, and that's why we don't have any in our lodge. I'm Red Green. Keep your stick on the ice. Thank you. It's a great honor to be presenting this award. Uh, isn't it Harold? Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay, here's what? the deal. Here's huh? the deal, okay? What? Um, Harold's like a character I do, right? I'm not doing Harold tonight, and you know, career's kind of taken off in a different avenue. I don't know if you noticed it, you know, but my bank account has. It's just gone, you know? So things will be changing between you and I from this point on. There's oh. a new relationship happening. I hope there's no problems, no questions. You savvy that, babe? Well, I have one question. Go. Uh, did you hear they're cutting your part on traitors? <laughs> you fell for it, Uncle Red. You fell. Fuck my sinker. You fell. You go, ah! Real him in. Real. <laughs> All right. Because you're real, Jeff. Okay. Oh, I don't encourage him. <laughs> Yeah. Pathetic. The nominees for Best Writing in a Dramatic Program are... You, you, you knew I was kidding, right? Because uh, I'll, I'll, t I'll take uh, another pay cut. It's not a problem. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, Harold. <laughs> just read the winner. I'm just going to read the winner. All right. And the winner is... Congratulations to Dennis Spoon, Little Criminals. See, Adrian Carson flipped this one over. Okay, great. <laughs> Don't forget our song, huh? Okay, good. This good. is the Gemini. You're at the Gemini. Well, come on. I don't think we're going to have time for the song. Oh, really? No, sorry. Well, are you going to have time to tell Ken Finkelman you ate all his crackers? Hey, at least I wasn't nosing around wardrobe looking for Wendy Mezzi's undercurrents, shall we say. That's personal, lady. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you get the flowers from David Cubitt you brought over? No. Where? Fooled you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Enough. All right, come on, let's do this thing. Where is my head at? March 1st, 1998. My dearest Morag, 
The show is going well, and I'm adjusting fine to the people of Toronto. Even though I'm from Hamilton, I can understand what they're saying. Just not why they're saying it. Kathy Jones has been great to work with. She only makes fun of important people, so everybody I know is safe. There's so much else I want to tell you, but you're probably in the audience right now, hearing this voiceover. So I'll talk to you later. I have to go now, because sadly, this whole bit is just a transparent segue device to get us into the next category. The award for best writing in a dramatic program or miniseries. Why, even my pen is just a breadstick. <laughs> but at least I have something to snack on after I introduce our next presenters. The star of Black Harbor, Rebecca Jenkins, and the star of Open Mic, Mike Bullard. <laughs> Breakthrough up the lodge a few months ago. Cable TV finally came to Possum Lake. We got a great deal on it, too. We just had the one local guy sign up, and the rest of us bought splitter boxes. <laughs> we watch a lot of television up there. Well, everybody except Old Man Mansbridge. But, uh... We find if you don't watch enough television, you run the risk of going to bed when you're not tired, and that can cost you a lot of money in the long run. <laughs> we especially enjoy the Canadian shows they have on there, so we decided to have kind of a special television day where we'd have a celebration with celebrities and contests and what have you down at the community center there. And we agreed that all the celebrities should be Canadians. Because when we watch American television, it's good, but it just doesn't feel like home to us. Eh? The truth is, Americans are a lot different than we are. It takes them 300 million people to have a country, we can do it with 30. <laughs> you know, they just have one language on their cereal boxes. I can only imagine what kind of hell that must be. So it's only logical that their celebrities haven't shared our experiences. Has David Hasselhoff ever pulled a snowmobile up through an ice fishing hole? <laughs> I don't think so. Whereas when I watched Traders, that guy Marty could have come right out of the lodge. <laughs> so we went all Canadian there, and my gosh, we had a heck of a time. We had a local girl started off with the national anthem, Barbara Singleton. She sings every bit as loud as Barbara Streisand and is a lot more cross-eyed. <laughs> we had Paul Gross there to attract the ladies and Sonia Smith to attract the men. Some of the cast from North of 60 and Nikita and Outer Limits. We even had a couple of television critics come to tell us whether or not we were enjoying ourselves. <laughs> the headliner, of course, was Red Fisher. I'd never actually seen fly tying as a performance art. You might want to trim that down under three hours and add some topless dancers if he's thinking of taking that one into Toronto. <laughs> but all in all, I'll tell you, it was a great Canadian day, and I just wanted to come down here to the Geminis and congratulate all the nominees and encourage them to keep up the good work. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Your host for this evening, Steve Smith. Oh, no. Pace yourselves here. Thank you very much. What a great night for Canadian television. It's gotten so good over the last 15 years. Da Vinci's Inquest, Bob and Margaret, This Hour, Cold Squad. These are good shows. And when you look at the amazing talent we have right here in Canada, and then you look at me, <laughs> and I'm a star. <laughs> huh? Oh, man. <laughs> 
I mean, uh, how did that happen? You know, I know you're thinking the CRTC rules, but I'm thinking the CRTC rule. <laughs> yeah. And now here I am hosting the Gemini Awards in this fantastic set. I love this set. Mind you, oh yeah, let's hear it. What a great set. You know, having a waterfall that close to a middle-aged man is a brave choice. <laughs> Especially with the trees there. <laughs> uh, it's been quite a year for uh, Canadian television since the last Gemini's. First of all, we all celebrated the millennium thing together. Remember that? I hope we don't do that again for a while. <laughs> and uh, there have been some big changes in Canadian TV as well. A lot of mergers. BCE bought CTV, which means Bell Canada is now in the television business. And you know what that's going to lead to? Video phones. <laughs> Let's just go slow there, folks. No video phones until we're sure every Canadian owns a bathrobe. <laughs> and cancellation of local news during the supper hour, that's been a big story. That means if you want to know what's going on in your town, your family's going to have to have dinner conversation. I know that's a setback. And we have a new 30-hour special called Canada of People's History. I didn't even realize we had 30 hours of history. <laughs> Maybe they shot it in real time. I don't know. <laughs> now, everybody's familiar with that Survivor series, but you may not know there was a Canadian version done by the Reform Party. Very similar format. A bunch of them got together, formed an alliance, and then voted Preston Manning off the island. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, we're only four weeks away from another federal election. Uh, one of the big issues is the brain drain to America. I don't, I don't see that personally. I know we've lost a lot of highly skilled intellectuals, but we also sent them my show and Tom Green. You know, I figure we're even. <laughs> I also figure that CanWest Global is going to have a great year because with all the election coverage, they'll be able to get their Canadian content out of the way by the end of November. <laughs> you can laugh. I'm the one who had to say it. On a personal note, I've just finished the 10th season of the Red Green Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoy producing the show at the CBC, and I'm just hoping that our ratings drop low enough that they'll be allowed to keep us. <laughs> hey, it's our party, come on. Well, you can't really mention ratings without talking about CTV's blockbuster smash, the Canadian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. They had 750,000 phone calls for a chance at winning a million bucks, eh? <laughs> That's how you make money in Canadian television. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. No. I, I could go on, but we all regret it later. Some of you may not even be waiting. So, uh... Let's get to the gold. You know, presenting the first award is always kind of tough. It's like being the first one up at a karaoke bar. <laughs> the audience hasn't lowered their expectations yet. <laughs> but with these two people, hey, you don't have to. <laughs> Ricola! Never mind. It was just, uh... <laughs> it was actually, uh... About 48 hours ago that the first Gemini Award of the Year was given out at the opening night gala. And to recap some of the highlights from that night, please welcome the host of that ceremony, a two-time Gemini winner himself from Undercurrents, my favorite dub poet, Clifton Joseph. I'm looking for you at the next gig, man. This is this dude doing a wonderful job. Please give it up for the host of the evening, really. Ow. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Steve. First, I'd like to take the opportunity here that I haven't had in my role as an investigative reporter with undercurrents. This demonstrates the subversive way 
that we Canadians are infiltrating the essence of American culture. Watch this. This is Jeopardy! Green stuff for a thousand, please. Resembling home improvement, this Canadian show set at the Possum Lodge can be seen on PBS. Brian, what is Red Green? The Red Green Show, yes. Way to go, Steve, way to go. <laughs>